China's latest military innovation, the JH-26 stealth fighter bomber, has sent shockwaves through the global defense community. As the first stealth fighter bomber of its kind, this aircraft represents a technological leap forward, redefining the possibilities in modern warfare. Close-ups of the JH-26's aerodynamic design, highlighting its tailor structure, delta main wings, and integrated cards, drawing inspiration from the J-20 stealth fighter. The JH-26 incorporates advanced designs that balance stealth and maneuverability. The tailless structure minimizes radar cross-section, while its innovative wing configuration enhances fuel efficiency and operational range. These features enable the JH-26 to maintain exceptional agility despite its size. With a maximum takeoff weight of 48 tons, a combat radius exceeding 4,000 kilometers, and supersonic speeds up to Mach 2, the JH-26 is designed for multi-domain operations. It excels in strike missions, electronic warfare, and reconnaissance, while also capable of carrying hypersonic ballistic missiles like the YJ-21. The development of the JH-26 not only positions China as a leader in fifth-generation craft technology, but also paves the way for advancements in sixth-generation fighter jets. Its innovations in stealth, flight control, and propulsion systems serve as a foundation for future military aviation projects. With the birth of the JH-26, we must ask a very serious question. Why does the U.S. Air Force not have this type of fighter bomber? In fact, as early as the Vietnam War, we were already paying attention to this special design that combines both a fighter and a bomber. In the 1960s, the United States faced an unprecedented challenge. How to build a single aircraft capable of fulfilling vastly different roles for the Air Force and the Navy. A bomber for one, carrier-capable interceptor for the other. The result, the F-11 Jack All Trades, master of none. Critics called it a political compromise in aviation form. In order to meet the different needs of fighters and bombers at the same time, the F-11 adopts many revolutionary new technologies. The F-111 was an all-weather attack aircraft capable of low-level penetration of enemy defenses to deliver ordnance on the target. The F-11 featured variable geometry wings, an internal weapons bay and a cockpit with side-by-side -side seating. The cockpit was part of an escape crew capsule. The wing sweep varied degrees and 70.5 degrees of full forward to full sweep. The wing included leading edge slats and double-slotted flaps over its full length. The aft woman's variable geometry wings, escape capsule, terrain following radar, and after burning turbofans were new technologies for production aircraft. The Aardvark's defining feature was its variable sweep wing. This ingenious design allowed it to excel at both high speed penetration missions and low speed takeoffs. But here's the catch complexity. Critics argued that the technology of the time wasn't ready was the Pentagon gambling with taxpayer dollars. Some say it was an engineering dream, others a bureaucratic nightmare. In Vietnam, the F-1 La Greven showcased its ability to fly below enemy radar and strike targets with precision. Yet, its legacy remains contentious. Was the success worth the lives lost during its float early days? The Viet Cong called the F-111 the howling death. But the U.S. military found that its real problem was that compared with fighter jets, fighter bombers had insufficient maneuverability. And compared with bombers, the F-111 seemed to have insufficient bomb load. Although it is the crystallization of U.S. Air Force technology, the overall operational results are unpleasant on both sides, and the maintenance cost is quite high. It performs 7% of the entire Air Force's missions, but consumes 25% of its maintenance. And what about the Navy, which abandoned the project altogether, favoring the F-14 Tomcat instead? Today, the F-11 is a relic, retired and replaced. But its story raises a critical question. Are we repeating the mistakes of the past with today's multi 
role fighter programs like the F-35. During the Vietnam War, the Soviet Union intercepted an American F-111 fighter jet and secretly transported it back to the country. They then reverse engineered it and built the Su-24. The Su-24 was developed by the Soviet Union to strengthen the ground attack capabilities of frontline aviation. It was also the Soviet Union's first fighter jet specifically designed to perform ground attack missions after World War II. The aircraft has high speed penetration capabilities and all weather capabilities. It can carry guided and unguided weapons to conduct interception attacks on enemy targets at a depth of 500 to 1,300 kilometers. It can also carry a 8 air to air missiles and a 23M cannon in the gun bay. Small nuclear bombs can also be brought for tactical nuclear bombing. It has long endurance, long range, and good acceleration. It only takes 1 minute and 30 seconds to climb to an altitude of 12 200 meters from releasing the brakes and has good high altitude performance. Fighter Bombers may be of little use to the U.S. Navy and Air Force, but they are a treasure to the Soviet Union, which has a limited budget. They exert a decisive capability on the battlefield against countries that lack absolute force interception capabilities, such as Afghanistan, Iran in the Middle East, and Iraq. This Su-24 can conquer air defense after completing bombing and can also conduct bombing raids after air defense. In 1990, the former Soviet Union proposed developing a successor to the Su-24 variable, sweep-wing attack aircraft. They added the Su-24's more mature navigation attack sensors to this 27 fighter. This resulted in the Su-34 attack aircraft, which is very similar to the 27, the Su-34's widened fuselage. Various sensors and system changes make it more suitable for ground attacks while having certain air-to-air -air capabilities. The Su-34 uses two AL-3 F-I-1 Saturn turbofan engines, has a maximum speed of Mod 8 when fully loaded with ammunition, and a maximum range of 4,000 kilometers. It can fly further if it is refueled in the air, but the biggest problem facing the Su-34 is that it does not have any stealth capabilities, so it can only use primitive low-altitude penetration tactics to approach enemy targets, and low-altitude flying greatly increases its chance of being shot down. Based on certain geopolitical factors, the Chinese Air Force largely refers to the organization of the Soviet Air Force. However, the Soviet Union does not want China to obtain Su-34 heavy fighter bombers to avoid future confrontation and threats. China forced to make its own light fighter bomber, JH-7A. Born in the Cold War shadow, the JH-7 was conceived as a response to an urgent need a strike platform capable of delivering heavy payloads at long range. The inspiration, Western aircraft like the F-111 and the Soviet Su-24. But while the Flying Leopard took to the skies in the 1980s, it was already behind the times, hampered by outdated design philosophies and limited indigenous technology. Fast forward to the 21st century, the JH-7 remains in service, despite being overshadowed by more advanced platforms like the J-16 and stealthy drones. Its lack of stealth capabilities and reliance on older avionics raise a critical question. Is the JH-7 still a deterrent, or merely a paper tiger in the face of modern adversaries? <laughs> Then there was the explosive development on December 26, 2024, a model named GH-26. Dubbed the Ghost in the Sky, this Chinese stealth bomber is rumored to render America's B-21 bomber not just obsolete but irrelevant. The GH-26 is about the same length as the J-20 but is wider and thicker, quite a heavy fighter, bomber over 50 tons. There are very prominent shining apertures on the lower sides of JH-26, most likely a pair of metal coated optical windows for infrared sensors. Based on the stealth design, the infrared sensor occupies the main sensor space on the JH-26 and is very useful against the current fifth generation of the United States. 
How do the Chinese solve the problem of insufficient fighter bomber performance? They installed a third engine on the JH-26. This third engine located on the top of the fuselage, together with the low, bypass turbofan engines on both sides, provides the JH-26 with a thrust of more than 40 tons. It perfectly solves the problem of insufficient thrust of Chinese engines and insufficient power of fighter bombers. Compared with twin engine aircraft, tri-engine jets have the third engine mounted on the center line of the fuselage. This results in more balanced power and relatively good aerodynamics. If counting stealth, three engines are therefore the only viable option. So why doesn't the US Air Force have such a design? In fact, it does. The Boeing Raptor is an American black project aircraft designed to demonstrate stealth technology. It was developed in the 1990s by McDonnell Douglas and Boeing. Its main engine was located directly behind the driver. The development was halted after it was assessed that it would prevent the driver from ejecting. The technology and materials were later used in Boeing's X-45 unmanned fighter jet. Surprisingly, the JH-26 ventral air intake is similar to the F-22s. This reflects its hypersonic speed requirements beyond Mach 2, reaching the effective speed range of DSI. Its wing sweep angle is 50 degrees, and it also has low supersonic drag and high-speed design. These designs can be regarded as the FF-111 swept wings are used to increase escape speed. The JH-26 range should be more than 4,000 kilometers, enough to bomb the U.S. Guam Air Force Base. Rough measurements of the weapons bay show a width of about 4M and a length about 7M, enough to carry more than 8 PL-15 air-to-air missiles or cruise missiles. There is no doubt that the strategic impact of the JH-26 will be immeasurable. This is essentially a death sentence for all existing U.S. war plans against China. The JH-26 is obviously designed for high-speed cruising. Its shocking thickness represents its huge internal space, which can carry fuel and ammunition over long distances, an all-round tailless plane and a third engine. The JH-26 is different from the G-20 has a large and wide-wing sweep angle. The People's Liberation Army clearly envisions possible future wars that require high-speed, long-range, and high-power, and low, speed maneuverability is not that important. However, the third engine is not without its shortcomings. Based on Air Force records operating m 11 tri-engine aircraft, the maintenance is more complicated than that of a twin engine or even a four-engine aircraft, and the fuel consumption must be higher than that of a twin engine aircraft. Ultimately, the overall cost of a triple engine will be more expensive than a twin engine Without proper maintenance, its reliability will be much lower than a twin engine. Therefore, the advantages of the JH-826 must be realized through accurate maintenance. Many years ago, the US military planned to upgrade the F-22. The F-22 has all been regarded as the ultimate air superiority fighter, but its production cycle has long ended. The program dates back to 2001, when designers proposed several configurations. The FB-22 was designed as an attack fighter, primarily focused on bombing. It had the same core capabilities as the existing F-20, but emphasized a delta wing configuration. The delta wing design provides greater surface area for increased fuel and weapons capacity, similar to what the Chinese have done for the GH-26. The FB-22's range, payload, and stealth capabilities are comparable to those of the B-2 bomber, while the FB-22 retains the ability to conduct air-to-air -air combat, including beyond visual range engagements. The two tactical concepts provided by the U.S. Air Force for the FB-2 can also be applied to the Chinese JH-26. One is to combine supersonic fast in and fast out to penetrate the enemy's air defense system. In China's case, it is a lightning attack on the bomber groups of Japan and Guam in the United States. The other is to approach with stealth, 
carry out surgical bombing, and then leave the war zone at supersonic speed. But unlike China, the U.S. Air Force has not given the green light to the FB-22 project. 